Hey guys, from here, welcome back to a new video. Now today, we are on to game, what even is this game week now? It's game week 19, Theo. But it doesn't feel like a game week. There's <laughs> about 15 games this week. Last time, there was about six. You just don't know with the Premier League anymore, do you? I know, and last time we had David Wheater, the footballer on, and he got three points from six games, which is really good. And he got two points, Theo. Crazy. And, and the he's a professional footballer. I know. I mean, is there any way we can top that with a special guest? I'm excited, but the scores on the doors are yeah. 93 for the guests, 111 for Thogden, 117 for Thogdad. And I'll set the like target this time. We're not going for anything high. We're going for 4,000 likes. 4,000 likes? Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Times three, 12,000. What are you doing? Dad, you know my policy about over 10k likes. Theo, have you heard like... who the guest is? Who is it? 12,000 likes. Who's the guest? I don't know. Oh, you'll find out in a minute. Okay. You'll find out in a minute. Dad, nothing's making us getting 12k likes. Not 12K. even a guest. 12k. What even is a guest? 13k. Okay, now you're just taking the piss. Now this is getting a hand. You know what, I'm off. I'm leaving again. Bye, have a great time. And the first game is Wolves against West Brom, 14th yeah. against 19th. Now, these two teams are in the worst form in the league, aren't they, Theo? We don't have to stream this, do we? Who knows? <laughs> Honestly, who knows? Wolves, West Brom. Wolves haven't been the best team ever since they haven't really had a striker ready for the Premier League. You know, Raul Jimenez had that really unfortunate head injury. And since then, they've had to play the 18-year-old Fabio Silva. He's not Premier League level. They need a striker. They'll sign one eventually in January. And until then, the results will drop off. West Brom haven't been great either. But they've had a couple of big draws for the teams like Liverpool and Man City. And I think they'll get another here, Dad. Wolves won, West Brom won. Wow, these are two teams who've got two points from the last five games. This is going to be a stinker. 1-0 to Wolves. Now, Theo, you might have noticed I've got a big smile on me boat race. Do you know why? You never really do. Because the special be guest today is the one and only Mark... Goldbridge. No, you're lying. It's not a prank. Well, show me Mark Show Goldbridge. me the content. Show me if it's true. Show me the money. Over to you, Mark. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Goldbridge. And what a pleasure it is to be doing Premier League predictions with Thogden and Thogdad. This is what dreams are made of. Let's get on with it. So, lots of games to go. First one, Wolverhampton Wanderers against West Bromwich Albion. It's a bit of a derby, this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm from this area. I think people would say it's not a derby, but it, they are very close. Wolverhampton and West Brom are very close in, in proximity. Hmm. Wolves, West Brom. I'm going to go with a draw because it tends to be a draw in a derby, even if they're going to pretend it's not a derby, which it probably technically isn't. So I'm going to go 1-1 one, one in that one. Leeds United 12th against Brighton and Hove Albion 17th. And Leeds were embarrassed in the FA Cup, weren't they, Theo? Yeah, 3-0 to Crawley Town. Not a great result, but it was an absolute masterclass from the Crawley <laughs> Town manager. Now, Leeds have conceded 33 goals this season, yeah. which is very poor form defensively. But I get a feeling they're going to win this one with Seriously. their attacking football. 2-1 to Leeds. Yeah, but Brighton need the points, Dad. And after that Man City 1-0 loss, I just can't see them, you know, dropping more points. I feel like they need to pick something up. Yeah. And I think it might come here away to Leeds. I just don't know. I just don't know. I'm going to go 1-1. Percy Tau to score. Well, I tell you what, Brighton are the draw specialists in the league. Eight draws this season. Let's go over to the man who doesn't so much like his pink boots, especially when Phil Jones is wearing them. Mark Goldbridge, what's he going for, son? Leeds United against Brighton next. Uh, I mean, this will have goals in it. Uh, to re you know, to be fair, I always wanted Brighton to get relegated, but actually, they play really good football. They just don't have many good players. And I think Potter, he's a bit like Harry Potter. He, you know, it's mystical the way he gets his team playing. Bielsa... Look, I don't get the hate against Bielsa. They're, they're not going to win the league with those set of players. But the way he plays football, it's a pleasure to watch. And if I was trying to convert somebody to watch football, I would get them to watch Bielsa's leads because they just play play so they're wide open. So I would expect this is definitely going to be nil nil. Then, isn't it? No, but I think it, I think there'll be a lot of goals in it. Um, I'm going to go 3-2 to Leeds in that one. 3-2 to Leeds, 3 to Leeds, 2 to Brighton. West Ham United against Burnley, 10th cool. against 16th. Now, Burnley have been in decent form recently and only just lost to Man United. Yeah, it was only 1-0. They put in a shift. Their form before that has been brilliant, especially at home. So I won't say that was a bad result at all. And you look at the form that West Ham are in. They, their last three games have all been away. Two wins and a draw. Not bad form. But coming into this... Burnley a very hard team to beat. I honestly believe this is the first time I've ever predicted this score, I think, ever. Maybe once, apart from this. A nil-nil in this game. <laughs> I'm going for it. That is a big statement, Theo. Now, I think it's going to be low scoring as well. Okay. I'm going to go West Ham 1-0. But what I'm wondering, 
Bloody Burnley, how are they going to do, Mark? <laughs> West Ham against Burnley, the battle of the Clarets that Villa aren't involved in because they've got a similar kit, Claret, Claret and Blue. So there's actually three three teams that wear Claret and Blue in the Premier League. There's a question for you. What other team has got more colours than that? I suppose there's quite, probably quite a few reds and blues, but uh, there's quite a lot of Claret and Blues. But this is a battle of the Claret and Blues. It's a battle of Burnley against West Ham. I bloody hate Burnley, but we did beat them in the midweek, so I'm uh, feeling a bit sympathetic to them. But West Ham are having a very good season as well. Uh, again, I think this has got a draw written on it. I'm going to go 1-1 one, one on this one. Uh, yeah, 1-1. One, one. And now for a London derby. It's a team in Fulham against a team in Fulham. Fulham against Chelsea, 18th against ninth and Fulham have drawn the last five and their form is actually better than Chelsea Theo. It's nutty in it and they were good against Spurs. Yes. It's when Lookman came on I thought Fulham were a serious danger. That ground he's such a good player isn't he? He's a special player and because of that because of Chelsea's insipid form I'm going for one all. You're going for one all? No. Yeah. Wait. I am going for one all. Okay, uh, let's just get a step back here. I understand Chelsea have been in very bad form, but they've had a break. They've had a blank game week. They've had time to reassess, get to know the tactics that really work for Chelsea. They've got a fully fit squad. You're going for a 1-1 draw against Fulham. What, you think it's going to be a Timo Werner masterclass hat-trick, do you? I think he'll score. He scored in his last game. <laughs> laugh at me. He's pranking me. Laugh at me. He's pranking me. They all laugh at me. Where's Jeremy Beadle? But they won't be laughing now, are you, when he scores, I tell you. <laughs> Fulham, uh, I, I think they play some really good football. They need to be respected yeah. more, but I'm going to go Fulham 1, Chelsea 2. I just sense a Werner goal and, and I, I've never said this before but I do. I feel it in this game and I think it will get Chelsea the win and I think Lampard needs a big win and go on a momentum run. It could stop here in a double game week near enough games be the perfect time to do it. Good luck. But now it's time to go over to the man that had some certain words to say about Stamford Bridge when he went there. Ooh. Let's see who predicts <laughs> the Chelsea game. Fulham against Chelsea. The North London derby. The rich area of London derby. It's not North London. That's, that's the other lot. That's West Ham. That's bloody... Arsenal in that. It's not a North London derby. It's the posh London derby. I don't know what part of London it is. Down by the bridge. Fulham, right next to the, the, the Thames. Nearly said the next to the sea. The Thames is not the sea. It's a river. It's technical. But um, Fulham, Chelsea. Fulham have taken points off Liverpool recently. They've taken points off Spurs recently. They're playing Manchester United next week. They've got Chelsea. That's the game I'm going to predict. I fancy Chelsea to win this. I think they will win. And I'm going to say Chelsea will win 1-3. One to Fulham, three to Chelsea. Leicester City in fourth against Southampton in seventh. Yeah. Two really good teams who were rested last week. And I think both of these teams have got an eye on Europe here. Probably. Well, one of them is in Europe currently, and that's Leicester. But I'm sure Southampton will be getting it. It's a funny old game. If you look at head to eggs, Southampton like this fixture. I think they've won the last two times they've played at King Power Stadium. Right. Do you think it's going to happen again? I think this is going to be a low-scoring game, surprisingly. I'm going for one all here, you? Theo. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. I was actually going to predict 2-1 to Southampton. Wow. Because that's the score of the last two games they faced from this fixture. I saw Ings got COVID and I thought, you know, he is a bagsman. I'm going to knock off one goal. I'm going to go for a 1-1 one -one draw too. That is a very big shout. Now, Leicester are in Europe. I wonder if they're going to Mallorca. And if they do, where can they buy some fruit? Goldbridge, what do you think? And then Saturday nights, 8 o'clock kickoff. I hate 8 o'clock kickoffs on a Saturday night. It's a good game, this Leicester Southampton, but it's not going to tear me away from watching the Bourne Ultimatum. Saturday night's movie night, unless it's a, a United playing. So I won't be watching this, but I think it's probably one of the picks of the weekend. Massive game for both of these two teams. Who will come out on top? Hmm, I'm going to say Leicester 2 1. Sheffield United against Tottenham Hotspur, 20th against 6. But Sheffield United have won a game and Billy Sharp it. was the hero there. Fair play to him, you know. It's a big win. Newcastle, 1-0. All the, all, the, all, the, all the Geordies are saying Steve Bruce out now, but in fairness to Sheffield United, can, I mean, they got, finally they got a win, but can they stay up? Well, the thing about Spurs, they go 1-0 up and they try to defend it. What's yeah. Jose doing there? I don't know, and I feel like I'm saying this every week now, but Jose needs a result here. Yeah. Absolutely. They need to beat the Blades away. If they don't, I mean... Look at the form table right now. Yeah. Sheffield United are 16th in the form table. Spurs are 12th. Four teams different. These are two teams in a completely different situation in the Premier League. Spurs need a win. And I'm going to back them to do it because I just think it's Jose in it. And they've got quality in the team. I'm going to go Sheffield United nil, Tottenham 2. What about you? I'm going 1-0 to Spurs. I don't believe it. That's what Goldbridge says. But what does he go for? <laughs> Aston Villa... Everton has been postponed Thogden and Thogdad. I was thinking about doing a watch along for that. Bloody hell. Sheffield United against Tottenham. Well, I predict that Spurs will go 1-0 up early on, then park the bus for 80 minutes, and then Sheffield United will score an equaliser. So it'll be 1-1. I'm joking, Spurs fans. Sheffield United have finally won a game. They've got five points now. Five points. 
They've nearly got as many points as a hexagon, but they have got five points, and but they're not going to win this. They won't win this. Sheffield United will lose. I will say nil, Sheffield United, two Spurs. They'll get a win. Uh, imagine if Spurs didn't drop so many points from winning positions. They would probably be top of the league. Uh, but they're not. But they will win this one. 2-0 Spurs against Sheffield United. And now for a minor game. I'm not even sure we should talk about it. But yeah, let's do it anyway. All right. Liverpool against Man United. Second against first. Liverpool, 37 goals. Man United, 33 goals this season. These are the two teams in form, aren't they, Phil? Hey, it's not a bad week to get Goldbridge on, isn't it? Literally <laughs> the biggest game in the table. If you look at the top of the table, three points in it between them. First versus second. Both considered, you know, title race contenders, really. I mean, that's obvious. Them and City. Do you think there's going to be a winner outcome in this game? It's a hard one to call this because, of course, Man United, 13 points in five games. They're on the better recent form. Yeah. But it's at Anfield. It's really hard. But you know what? I'm just going to sit on the fence here You're gonna, and go one all. You're going to throw out your prediction already? I am. Yeah, go on. You tell That's us your... bloody prat. I knew you'd go for a draw because Borinel Fogdad was going to do that. Liverpool, Anfield in the Premier League, we all know their record, the three-year record. Yeah. You know, no one's beaten them for three years. Could United, I, I know you've given your prediction, but could they break it coming into this week? Because they're on better form overall, better goal difference. Uh, they can, but I don't think they will. But having said that, the way Pogba played in the last uh, game, in fact, the last few weeks, yeah. that's been very impressive. And Rashford's at the end of it. And, and you know what I like? You know, Rashford, Bruno, Pogba, yeah. they're all top world-class footballers and they're all linking up so well. And if they can all stay fit and performing, they could beat Liverpool. Yeah. But then you look at Liverpool. I know Jota's out, but they've got that front three, don't they? Yes. Salah, Firmino, Mane. <laughs> could they do some damage? They can always do some damage. But, you know, two points in three games. Yeah, they've not been great recently, but it wouldn't be like Jürgen Klopp to come out with a big result in a big game like this because he could do it. He's one of the best managers in the world. He's won a Champions League, Premier League. He's done a lot. But Ole's been good this year too. It's seriously difficult what to go for. I'm literally thinking on the spot. I want to know what Goldbridge thinks too. Overall, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw, like you. Yeah. Because I just think they're going to be a little bit cagey. I think both teams... We'll get their goal, but then they'll be happy with it in a way that yeah. they just don't want to lose because it's so tight at the top. Can't see a winner outcome. And now over to a man who hopes that Kevin Friend won't be the referee in this <laughs> game, Mark Goldbridge. It's the big one. It's Liverpool, Manchester United, Super Sunday. Come on, you Reds. Come on, Manchester United. I've done a preview on the United stand for this, and I said 1-1, but I feel because I'm a guest on this show, even though it's totally contradictory, I'm going to give a different score prediction. Liverpool 1, Manchester United 2. Which one will be right? The United stand prediction or the one I've done on here? But I'm not going to be boring and stay the same one, because the people will go, oh, we said that one. So I'm going to go 1-2, Manchester United. Manchester City in third against Crystal Palace in 13th, and yeah. Palace just drew 0-0 with Arsenal a few minutes ago. What's going to happen here, Theo, eh? What a bad result for Palace, that. Yeah. They played all right, too. That's some good chances. They did, yeah. Eze looked good, I'll give him that. And Wilfred Zaha can always bag a goal. Considering they just looked woeful against Everton in the Cup, that's a good result for Palace. But Man City, at the Etihad, they've got the best form in the league. We're talking about Man United, three-point gap with Liverpool and all of that. We need to put some more respect on Man City's name, who are in a serious title race again after their terrible start. Pep is seven games unbeaten. Incredible form. It's like the old Pep again, isn't it? It really is. And they've got 13 points in five games, the same as Man United. Yeah. And that man, Phil Foden, in my fantasy team, he got the winner, didn't he, last yeah. week there? They've sorted out the defence with John Stones, Ruben Diaz, and them two just look so solid. And like you said, Foden's popping out. They've got the rotation. They've got yeah. a double game week, and I probably think they'll win both. And it's going to start here with a Man City 2-0 win. I don't know who's going to get contributions, but I'm sure De Bruyne will be involved. I'm sure a lot of you got him capped in this week of Fancy 2. Our predictions are always the same these days. 2-0 Man City. Well, someone might be different. Maybe Goldbridge goes something different. Sunday night, Manchester City are playing Crystal Palace. Um, I'm very impressed with Manchester City at the moment. They're, they're defending really, really well. I don't really like the false nine. They don't create many chances. I hope they stick with the false nine because... It it gives other teams like you know Brighton should they should have beat Brighton comfortably the other night and they left they let they left them in the game and won one nil so I'm going to say three one Man City and now for Arsenal in eleventh against Newcastle in fifteenth Arsenal won three in a row and then drew nil nil tonight thank you very much for that four in a row in all competitions. 
got the 2 0 win over Newcastle oh, at the time. That so is I'm true. beating them five for Arteta, and it ain't bad form. And they're playing against Newcastle again. They didn't beat them in normal time, but they beat them in extra time with two goals. So they're playing Newcastle this time. They're going to have to score goals early. It's going to be low scoring. It's pretty it, obvious. It is. And Newcastle have been simply dire recently. Yeah. I feel sorry for the Geordies. Two points in five games. It's just horrible to watch, isn't it? Theo? Question for you. You know, Arteta out shouts were happening a few weeks ago. That's all changed. But let's talk about Steve Bruce. Does he have a job if Arsenal win this game? He does, because what else can he do with that squad, Theo? You're protecting Honestly. Steve Bruce. I can't think of a Newcastle fan out there who wants Steve Bruce to stay. And you're backing him. I'm backing him because he's not got the budget behind him. That's you me. need new owners in there. Well, I'm not. I'm not backing him. I think Steve Bruce, his time is up. Get someone new in there, fresh, more motivated. <laughs> Play some more attacking football. I know it's what Newcastle want. Uh, it starts yeah. with Mike Ashley. How can you be motivated at Newcastle at the moment? Who would want that job? The man who found a way last time was uh, Rafa Benitez. And, you know, he did do a job there. He played some better football than what Steve Bruce did. And let's be real, they want a refresh. It might be time for it. But he left because of the owner. Steve yeah. Bruce. That has to change too. What can he do, honestly? I feel sorry for him. Dad, you're right. That has to change too. A lot has to change at the club. But I think Arsenal 1-0 Newcastle. We've gone on a long time <laughs> Yeah, here. we have. You know, Smith, Rowe and Saka made a real difference for Arsenal. And, and they're looking much better now. So I'm going to back them. And I'm going to say Arsenal 2-0. And over to the guy who once won a prize for being the Man United fan who lives closest to Old Trafford. He's from Nottingham. Monday night football, better than Thursday night football. It's Arsenal against Newcastle. And uh, Arsenal have had a bit of a mini revival at the moment. Uh, that, that'll get popped when they play United in a couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, Arsenal doing quite well at the moment. Um, I've recorded this before they've played Palace. So I don't know whether they beat Palace, but I presume they did because Crystal Palace are a bit crap. Crap well Palace. Um, so I think that Arsenal, Newcastle, I would expect Arsenal to win again. And they'll start getting a nosebleed and they'll start thinking they're going to win the league now. But you're not. You're just playing teams that are all you should be beating so Arsenal 2 Newcastle nil. and now for the extra games West Ham United against West Bromwich yep. Albion what are you thinking here Theo well yeah this is the second match of the game week both a double game week for them I'm seriously thinking both of these teams will take point yes now Big Sam's just come in he's got a yeah. difficult job hasn't he he does and this is his second game week and for David Moyes as well I mean you know he's been smashing at West Ham and this is his second game of the game week and after playing Burnley I feel like they might have sucked the life out of them <laughs> so I'm sure we'll take a point here at home to West Brom I'm sure Big Sam enough in the tank for that. So yeah, 1-1. One, one. I think the two managers will talk about their days at Everton, but I think David Moyes will come out on top 1-0. Ooh, interesting. Well, let's see if your prediction is good as Mark Goldbridge's Koulibaly rap. Let's go into that one. <laughs> West Ham against West Brom. Repetition now. We've already done a West Ham and West Brom uh, game, but they were playing different teams. So if West Ham do draw against Burnley and West Brom do draw against West Wolves, I think this one will be a win for West Ham. Two West Ham, West Brom nil. And now for Leicester City against Chelsea. Two teams in the top half of the table. It's Jamie Vardy against Timo Werner. And what's going to happen here? Well, it's Timo Werner. He's just scored in the last <laughs> week. No, 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 no. Double game week, right? They both already played. Chelsea played Fulham. Leicester yeah. played Southampton, OK? Chelsea... I think they've come off a win here. I think they've been playing with a bit more confidence. Leicester may have drawn Southampton. That was my prediction. So I'm coming into this game thinking Leicester, Chelsea, both double game week. They're taking a draw. I'm going to go for a 1 1 here. If you look at the form table right yeah. now, Chelsea 15th. But I think with their blank game week, their time to reassess in the Fulham win, which I'm predicting, I think they'll be on better form here. And I think it will be a draw. What are you going for? Now, I'm thinking of bringing in Jamie Vardy for Kane in the FPL thing. Really? Okay. I'm going to go for a one all. I'm thinking Jamie Vardy, masterclass. Big statement. Now, Theo, I'm getting a bit hungry. I'm going to go on YouTube and watch Cooking with Goldbridge. What's your prediction, mate? And then again, on, on Tuesday night, good game again for Leicester. Leicester at home to Chelsea. Now then, this will be a real test for Chelsea. If they can get three points against Fulham, it will give them a bit of confidence coming into this game. And I think Leicester will beat Southampton. You know, Chelsea have got to win this game if they want to catch Leicester and get in the top four. So it's a must-win game for Chelsea. I wonder how Leicester will approach it. It's hard predicting two games in the future. But I'm going to say that this will be a 1-1 draw. And now for Manchester City against Aston Villa. Two yeah. more form teams, Theo. Hard to call, isn't it? Another double game week as well, so we don't know. I mean, Man City had the rotation, and I think they have enough squad depth, especially compared to Villa. You look at yeah. Villa's bench, yeah. there isn't as much rotation as City. So I'm going to back City. I think it'll be closer than the other game. I'm going to go City 2, Villa 1. But yeah, like you said, I think someone like Ferran Torres will just have a good game. Yeah, I think Villa might fall away from now on. And Seriously. I'm actually going to go Man City 2, Villa 0. Sheesh. 
He went for it. I'm sure you'll need a TV license to watch this one, whether you have it or not. Goldbridge. Wait, go game is Manchester City against Aston Villa. This should be a good game, actually. Manchester City against Aston Villa. I would love Villa to get something out of this. Out of all the games City have got at the moment, they've got quite a good run of games where you'd expect them to win them all. I think Villa is probably their easiest, one, hardest one. I would hope Villa can get something out of it, but I don't think they will. So I'm going to say 2-1 Manchester City. And now for Fulham against Mark Goldbridge's beloved Manchester United. Now, Fulham got a good draw at Spurs. Can they get anything from this game here? Well, we don't know how Fulham are going to do against Chelsea. We don't know how United are going to do against Liverpool. Again, this is a double game week for both these teams. I'm coming into it thinking, play like Martial. It's going to have a good game. Ooh. Maybe a goal and assist. And I'm sorry for not backing Fulham this week, but your fixtures are very tough. I know you're going to pick out a result from one of the two, but I'm going to go Fulham nil, Man United 2, because there's too much firepower in the Red Devil side. What do you think? Fulham 1, Manchester United 2. And I'll tell you what, we need Goldbridge's prediction. And then the Wednesday night game is Fulham against Manchester United. As we spoke about, uh, Fulham, I think, will have lost to Chelsea. And they're going to lose to Manchester United. Manchester United will beat Fulham. We are too good. Fulham 0, Manchester United 2, Bruno Fernandes penalty and a Marcus Rashford individual talent goal. And now for a Lancashire derby between Liverpool and bloody Burnley. And yep. surely this is going to be a home win there. Well, who knows? When you're playing Burnley, it okay. can be... You know, it could go either way, can't it? You look at the Man United game when they yeah. played Burnley and it ended 1-0 to the Red Devils. It was a game where Burnley had their chances and it could have gone either way. And I think there'll be a similar story here. And it will be a tough one, but I can't see all the Anfield broken record being broken here. But it might be broken the game before by United. Who knows? Again, a double game week situation. So I'm going to go Liverpool 1 Burnley nil. What about you? Well, we've learnt never to write off Sean Dyche and Burnley because exactly, they yeah. are a difficult team to beat. But it's Liverpool we're talking about. And I'm going 2-0 to the home side. Okay, that's understandable. One thing's for sure, it's going to be a scrappy one. Nearly as scrappy as when DT played Goldbridge on the football pitch. <sighs> Ooh, What's your prediction, mate? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, Liverpool against Burnley. Um, Liverpool will be bouncing back from their loss against Manchester United at, Old, at uh, Anfield and they will beat Burnley 3-0. And finally, the 15th game is Aston Villa against Newcastle. Go on, Foggy, what's going to happen here? Well, I think Villa will come back with a loss in their first double game week, but in the second game, I can see them, I can see them scoring a couple because... At this point, we don't even know if Steve Bruce is gone or not. Like, yeah. if Newcastle really get battered in the game before, they might do. And they might have a fresh new manager, and they might motivate them out there to get a win. But from where we are right now, Bruce is the gaffer coming into this game. Villa at home, and although their home form isn't always brilliant, I'm going to back them to get a 2-0 win here. Yeah, and I can't predict anything other than a home win. I'm going 1-0 to Aston Villa. Yeah. But you know, I'm feeling a bit sad right now, Mark Goldbridge. My dog's just died. Can you react to that, please? It's Aston Villa against Newcastle, which has been played on a Saturday and is classed as part of this game week. It's a, a massive game week. Aston Villa against Newcastle. I actually think that Villa... Verbal might start to burst a little bit. I think that that little break from COVID might cause them a problem. I think they will lose. I've already predicted it against Man City. And I think against Newcastle, the bubble will burst further and it will end up being a draw. And I'm going to say that this game will end Villa nil, Newcastle nil. I hate predicting nil nils. <laughs> right, that is it. How have we pulled that one off? Mark Goldbridge. What a legend of the community. Yeah. Brilliant guy. Thank you so much for yeah, coming on. He didn't have to come on. Like, it's, it, He's a great guy. Absolute legend. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, the link is in the description. What a geezer. And that today concludes Mark Goldbridge predicting his Premier League predictions with Thogden and Thogdad. It's over before it even began. But thanks for having me on. An absolute pleasure. Speak to you all soon. And also, if you're new here from Goldbridge's fan base or whatever you are, please subscribe. We're trying to get half a million. He's already done it on the United stand, but we're trying to get it too, okay? Let's smash 500,000. Every subscriber counts. If you haven't, please click it. And I don't know how we're going to get, what was it, 12? 13,000. It's just not possible. I mean, I say it every week, and you sometimes smash it, you sometimes don't. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to be Let's positive. Do it. I'm going to be positive. Thank you to everybody for watching this. We will be back next week for another Prem Predictions. Looking forward to it. Um, but how can we top this guest? I don't know. Impossible. Right. Have a good one. Enjoy the footy. And we'll see you on a bit. Bye, guys.